Oregon. Look, Jonathan, I'm sorry, I'm going to end it right there. I'm not going to take any conspiracy theories on this show. Jonathan, that's Gillian, not a conspiracy yes, theory. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I'm not having it. Listen, Jonathan, I'm an investigator. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it, Jonathan. It's very rare here at Pondering Politics where we publicly praise a Fox News host who isn't Jessica Tarlov, but we're about to do it here because Fox News host Stuart Barney got appropriately fed up and then abruptly ended an interview with a Trump-supporting ex-FBI agent who said on air that Democrats want Trump dead. Varney reacted with visible disgust and cut off the interview, and we have to talk about it. But before we do, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we got a clip to share with you here. Uh, I'm actually late to this. Um, number one, I, I was stunned. When I found this, I was like, this hasn't gone viral yet. I figured this would be all over Mediate uh, or uh, other news aggregating sites because this is one of the most incendiary clips I have ever seen on Fox. That surprised me. It also surprised me, quite frankly, that not only did Stuart Varney end the interview, I figured he wouldn't follow uh, the guests down this particular rabbit hole, but not only did he end the interview, he reacted with visible disgust and cut the guy off, okay? Okay. We're going to play the clip for context. The person in question is a former special FBI agent named Jonathan Gilliam, who is a conservative Trump supporter. He was recently on Piers Morgan Uncensored, uh, in which he again kind of indulged his his Trump supporting. He said that, you know, it's really Democrats who have a problem with violent incendiary rhetoric. But then he says stuff like this on the Fox Propaganda Network. Again, it's stunning. One of the most incendiary clips I've ever seen on Fox. We're going to play the clip and unpack it together. The New York Times reports that Trump himself plans to keep campaigning as scheduled, despite the assassination attempts. Today, he's going to be in Flint, Michigan, before traveling tomorrow to New York, actually. Should Trump change the way he campaigns? Well, so far, the way he campaigns has not been the problem, uh, Stuart. It's been the Secret Service. It's been how they uh, actually do their work. I mean, we saw in Pennsylvania where they did not do a proper threat assessment. They did not extend the perimeter past one of the few buildings that was there and secure that area. That doesn't cost them anything to do that. They just didn't do it. And they created a fatal funnel because of that. Okay, so we could look at that one and say, potentially that was just incompetence. But now we have the same exact thing occur again and uh, and these attackers will take advantage of that. So I have to sit back and ask, is this a nefarious thing that's going on within the side of the Secret Service that they're just leaving these areas open? Because if that's the case, then I think Trump needs to take a serious step back and hire individuals like myself and other people that I can bring in to simply do perimeter checks, and then he can campaign as normal. But right now, I'd be sweating bullets every time I went out there because I'm gonna say this on air, I said it earlier on the radio, the Democrat party, regardless of the rhetoric that they want, they want Trump dead. I don't know, hold on a second, people, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm sorry, Jonathan. Uh, I don't think you can say that legitimately. Uh, I think we can I, I say it legitimately, but I can think we can say that legitimately based on the verbiage that they use and then they cover up. To say that they want him eliminated, to okay. say that they, they want him gone, these are words that push people forward, and then you have directors of agencies like this that come on, and they do not do the job, the simple job of perimeter security well, over and over okay, and over look, again. Jonathan, I'm sorry, I'm going to end it right there. I'm not going to take any conspiracy theories on this show. Jonathan, That's Gillian, not a conspiracy uh, theory. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I'm not having it. Listen, Jonathan, I'm an investigator. Listen, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis. So kudos to Stuart Varney for not only immediately calling Jonathan Gilliam out, immediately. Number two, rejecting it wholeheartedly. Number three, ending the interview. And then number four, and this is perhaps as important or more important than the other things I mentioned, reacting with visible disgust. You see it on Stuart Varney's face. It's not just perfunctory, oh, I'm just covering my ass for the sake of the network. He didn't go, you know, Jonathan, I'd love to be able to have you on, but man, I, I got to cut this because, you know, just legally, um, we'd get in a lot of trouble if we signal boost this. No, Stuart Varney made the decision and reacted with visible disgust. Kudos to him. And it's sad that that deserves kudos because you would think that that's the bare minimum that we can expect of a journalist. But I don't know if every Fox News host, I don't know if Sean Hannity would do this, Laura Ingram. I don't know if Brett Bayer, Martha McCallum. I have no idea. But Stuart Varney reacted correctly and cut off 
that interview and it was only two minutes into it. It's not like they were nearing the end anyway. Usually these segments go on seven to nine minutes. He ended it relatively quick after explicitly, visibly calling this person out and reacting with disgust. And you should react with disgust. Okay, so a couple of things. Number one, law enforcement agencies, even at the federal level, are almost entirely, or I shouldn't say, excuse me, they are comprised in terms of the majority of conservatives and centrists. It's not liberals replete in the Secret Service or in the FBI. Most of these agencies have only ever been led by conservative Republicans, the FBI in particular, Jonathan Gilliam's former agency. So this idea that like Democrats have infiltrated law enforcement and are trying to kill Donald Trump is preposterous. Then to say, well, Democrats want Trump dead because of the rhetoric they've used. Jonathan Gillum, if you're watching, number one, please like and subscribe. Number two, we can play that game all day comparing rhetoric. I will always win. Democrats will always win. Republicans will always lose because for every one example you can find, of a Democrat, a prominent Democrat like President Biden, AOC, somebody in elected office, somebody within the party who is powerful saying something divisive about Donald Trump that remotely connotes a violence, we can find two to five to 10 to 20 examples of prominent MAGA Republicans or Trump himself doing the same thing. It is a staggering asymmetrical ratio and MAGA Republicans have no answer for that. They know they would lose that comparison every damn time. So instead, what they do is try to gaslight you. So if the argument is harsh rhetoric leads to the threat of physical or political violence, that's not exactly counterintuitive. I think that's a reasonable proposition to defend. I don't know how strict you want to make it, but fair enough. You could probably make that argument. But by that same standard, Donald Trump and MAGA Republicans are objectively far, far, far worse than President Biden and the Democrats. As a matter of fact, after, immediately after, the two failed assassination, excuse me, assassination attempts on Donald Trump, President Biden and Vice President Harris, Democratic leaders, publicly condemned the violence in no uncertain or ambiguous terms, explicitly. President Biden called Donald Trump after both situations, both attempts. So did Vice President Harris. As a matter of fact, Donald Trump said recently that he had a really nice conversation with those two. This is a dishonest, cynical political ploy by MAGA Republicans to try to hurt Democrats. I don't know if they genuinely believe that Democratic rhetoric is responsible for this. But again, it doesn't matter if they believe it or if they're just cynically employing that talking point. It is effortlessly refuted because by that same standard, Republicans, that party, Republican politicians are eminently more violent and pro-violence than any elected Democrat. It's incredibly dishonest what Jonathan Gilliam said, especially as a former law enforcement officer. And also sounded like he was trying to pitch himself on live TV. Please, Trump, hire me. Mr. Trump, please hire me. Please hire me. I'll help you. I'll protect you. And then when Stuart Varney called him out on the conspiracy theory, I'm an investigator. Have you launched an investigation? You being a former investigator, Mr. Former Special Agent, doesn't mean that anything you say is the product of an investigation. You actually have to conduct one. Jonathan Gilliam has not conducted an investigation into the two assassination attempts on Donald Trump. The reason I know that is, number one, he's not affiliated with a law enforcement agency. And number two, he's, the, those investigations are ongoing. Incredibly dishonest and irresponsible, wildly irresponsible. That's why I'm stunned that that clip is not more viral than what it is. I'm stunned. I, had, I never saw it. And it's apparently like a day or two old. But the bottom line is this. The Fox Propaganda Network has its issues. Had to pay $800 million recently in that Dominion uh, defamation lawsuit because they knowingly signal boosted Donald Trump's big lie because they were worried they were losing a viewer share to Newsmax and OAN. It is a very corrupt, journalistically flawed institution. However, they have their moments. And it's sad that this is one that deserves praise, but I am going to call it out and praise it. Stuart Varney reacted with visible, palpable disgust. I don't think that was faked. I don't think that was manufactured. I think he was really disgusted by what Jonathan Gillum had to say, and it wasn't just a perfunctory, I'm going to cover my ass for the sake of the legal department here at Fox. So glad he did what he did. Glad Jonathan Gillum was called out, and I hope that Jonathan Gillum is never interviewed on Fox again. He should be publicly shamed for the disgusting thing that he said. Pretty pathetic. Great for, from Stuart Varney, though. In the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments.